first few weeks of med school. How are you feeling during that time? I did not handle <laughs> my first few weeks of med school. There, there is another world out there. It's a happy, pleasant world out there, of, even though you forget that sometimes. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the podcast. My name is Jericho. Um, today I'm super excited to be here with Sarah. She's an MS2 at McGovern, and she's also an HPSP student. Um, so super excited to talk about that. Um, thank you, Sarah, for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. No worries. Uh, so before we get into everything else that we're going to be talking about, um, I guess we can start with this. Uh, what made you want to go into medicine in the first place? Well, growing up in the South, I always saw all of these, you know, natural disasters. We had a lot of hurricanes, one very recently as well. And I always saw all of the first responders heading in you know, into the chaos instead of away from it. And I thought that was an incredible thing. And I always wanted to be a part of that group. And I wanted to know how. And of course, there's a lot of ways you'll hear it by any pre-med advisor. You know, there's a lot of ways to help people. But I was a kid that asked why. And when I got an answer, I would ask why again. And I wanted all the details. And so that's what medical school was able to offer me. All, and I've learned more than I could have ever imagined about that, about all the nitty gritty details. But it's been so rewarding. Um, and it's going to give me that opportunity to, opportunity to one day be one of those people going into the chaos instead of away from it. Okay. Um, so you are an HPSP student, and for those who don't know, could you explain a little bit about what the program is and kind of how you first found out about it? Yeah, so HPSP stands for Health Professions Scholarship Program, and there's a group of them in any branch of the military, so that's, you can go in Air Force, Army, or Navy, and uh, I found out about it at a pre-health day at my university. They have one every year. And I hadn't really thought of the military before. I don't come from a military family. I always had a great respect for them, but it just wasn't really on my radar. And for some reason, I just chose to go to the information session for military health professionals. And the recruiter at that time, he was an ex-Marine and gave the most passionate speech about, you know, these people are heroes, the ones that go out and are, and are fighting for our country and things like that. But who takes care of the heroes? He posed that question and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to take care of the heroes. Um, so that's what got me going. Right after that session, I walked up to that recruiter and I said, this is what I want to do. Can you help me, help me make it happen? And he sure did. A couple months later, I was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Air Force. Oh, wow. Uh, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. Are there any differences that you know um, the, between civilian doctors and doctors who work in the military and maybe specifically in the Air Force as well in your case? Yeah. So, you know, disclaimer, I'm not a recruiter. <laughs> so it isn't set in stone, but from what I've heard, being an MS2 this far, you really get to practice medicine the way you want to. So in the civilian world, you'd be restricted by um, pricing and things like that. You know, a lot of things are dominated by money. In the military, it's all covered by the government. So um, if you want a CT, your patient's getting a CT. And you, the patient or you don't have to worry about uh, the monetary concerns, which is really, really nice. So that means your patient gets the best care and you're probably a much happier doctor. And also you get these incredible opportunities for experiences that you would just never have in the civilian world. You know, you can be on planes, you can be traveling the world, you can Go to dive school if you're in the Navy. Uh, there's just, the opportunities are endless. Okay. Um, I also have this other question. So in my very limited understanding of the military, um, I think if you enter the military as a healthcare professional, you could also become an officer as well. Um, what do officers do in the military and maybe specifically in the Air Force as well that you know of? Yeah, that's a great question. So you have a college degree, you are commissioned in as an officer. So what that means for you, uh, first and foremost, is that you don't have to go to basic training, which is what you see on the TV shows, you know, all the enlisted people just going through 12 weeks of craziness. Uh, you start going through a training, but it's not quite as intense because as officers, you're essentially, think of it in a big corporation, you're the bosses. The officers, you know, medical officers, infantry officers, there's a million different job titles, but they essentially are the bosses um, of their little unit, whatever they're overseeing. Does that make sense? Okay, that does make sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, what is, um, have you done officer training already? And if you have, uh, what is that like? Yeah, I have. So I did my six weeks of commissioned officer training in Montgomery, Alabama at Maxwell Air Force Base uh, to Alabama. So that was my first experience. Uh, it was very hot. It was in the middle of July. Um, so that was interesting. And I, like I said, I don't come from a military family, so I really had no idea what to expect. Um, but it was really cool because you learn how to wear the uniform. You learn a little about um, military etiquette and things like that, like how to salute how to stand at attention, how to march. I thought that was really cool. And also a physical fitness component, of course. So we woke up and did PT, um, not every morning, but almost every morning. And that was a 4.30 wake up call. Um, and then we end the day around five. Um, but it was an incredible experience. You know, I was terrified going in, but I came out with incredible friends. Cause there's nothing like wake, waking up at 4.30 to go run a couple miles that really brings people together. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. What are the choices of specialties um, in the military? Um, is it different? Like, is the matching process different? And what kind of dictates whether you can pursue one specialty or another? Right. Also a wonderful question. So in the military, when you're in the military, you operate based on the needs of the military. So saying that, you can go into any specialty you want, but understandably so, the Air Force is going to want more emergency physicians and family physicians than dermatologists. Um, and that's just the way things are. That doesn't mean you can't be a dermatologist. It just means when you go into the match process, there's going to be like one or two spots for derm. Granted, there's fewer applicants too, fewer military applicants. Um, and there's going to be way more spots for emergency medicine or surgery or something like that. So, and it just, it depends on the year too, what they need filled, what they don't need filled, things like that. One of my good friends that I went to COT with, commissioned officer training, she's dead set on being a dermatologist. So, but I don't want to scare people away with that answer because say when she applies for residency and they don't have any derm spots open, that's totally fine. She would do a year, um, either in the military, it's called a GMO and, uh, I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah. And it would be like a general practitioner and it would be your intern year in the military. And then you pay back your time in the military and then you can go and separate from the military after you've paid your time back and do residency for dermatology. So it doesn't, it doesn't hinder you in any way. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Um, yeah. So what are the best parts about pursuing medicine through um, HPSP uh, slash the military? Yeah, so the monetary uh, <laughs> is one of the for biggest sure. perks ever because you they pay for med school. In addition to paying for med school, they pay for all of your books and all of your equipment, and you get a monthly stipend all of that, which is really nice. So it's just very comforting to know that that's just one less thing to worry about when you're already worrying about everything in med school. Um, so, but of course, you know, I always tell people don't do it just for the money because it is, it is a long journey that you're in. So you're going to have to work to serve your country and work with a lot of incredible people, which I don't think is too hard of a, a thing to feel. Um, and I also just, absolutely love the opportunities that they have. I, we had a meeting just the other night of just HPSB people across McGovern and Baylor and the new U of H people. Uh, it's cool, yeah. And we all were talking about all these opportunities and some of my friends in the Navy, they want to go to dive school to do dive medicine, which I didn't do the thing. Um, in the Air Force, I am thinking about wanting to go into flight medicine. Uh, they physician pilot program where they train you up to fly a fighter jet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's just, and you would never, ever be able to ask in the civilian world, right? So it's just all incredible opportunities that you would never have before. And it really expands your view of the world of just how many things you can do, especially as a physician. Okay. That's all seems really exciting. It seems like you guys have a lot of different experiences that um, civilians are not going ever going to be able to experience. So that's fun. Um, I do want to transition to med school now, just general med school. Um, I wanted to ask, what was your transition like? Um, you're MS2 right now. So what was your transition like 
maybe an MS1, the first few weeks of med school. How are you feeling during that time? Was it hard? Um, yeah, what was it like? Oh, Jericho, I did not handle my first few weeks of med school. Uh, some people do, some people don't, but in, in with the mindset of, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to find that balance. I'm just going to study all the time, and that's going to give me an edge. Well, to anyone listening, it doesn't give you an edge. It just gives you <laughs> migraines and the physical illness. Um, but it's okay. You know, you live and you learn. Uh, I learned pretty early that studying 24 seven, even on weekends, uh, did not give me, get me ahead. You know, it exhausted me and I forgot more than I retained. And, um, but that's okay. That's kind of what your first year is about is just figuring out this new life of yours that you've just started. Um, cause med school is just kind of a, a different beast. Um, so yeah, but it got better. <laughs> Happy to report it, it does. Um, so yeah, I didn't handle it well, but if I could give anybody any advice, it would be, you know, the word balance is thrown around a lot, you know, find your balance. And you're like, what does that mean? I have so much to learn. How on earth do I find balance? That's studying really hard all week and then not doing anything on the weekends. Me, I kind of go in spurts. So it's just kind of what I'm doing. If I'm having a good day, I'll study all day, even if it's a if I'm just feeling it, if I don't have anything else going on, I'll get all my stuff done and plus some. And then some days I'm not. And some days I just do the bare minimum of my reviews and whatnot, and I'm okay with that. And finding time for yourself, of course, is very good. I, I abandoned a lot of my um, former hobbies the first year of med school, and that was so disheartening. Um, so don't abandon your hobbies. <laughs> okay. Um, on that note, uh, what are some things, maybe when you're getting stressed out and things are getting a little hard in med school, what are some things that you like to do to uh, um, keep your mental health uh, good and, and deal with the stress in general? Yeah, so I am a big proponent of walks because it doesn't exhaust you. It's not like going for a 10-mile run or anything, but it does get me out of my apartment or wherever I'm studying, and it just gets me in a different headspace. Um, and it reminds you that there, there is another world out there. It's a happy, pleasant world out there that you are also a part of, even though you forget that sometimes. I love taking walks. I also, I try to remember, you know, why I started this. You know, it, and we all have our own reasons. Um, so I try to remember why I started this. Sometimes that helps shadowing. So some, you know, my first year I did a shadowing shift, uh, a night shift in the OR with trauma. And that so cool. You know, that's not everyone's thing, but I loved it. And I remember the patient, I was getting to talk to him and because everyone else is running around, but I was the one with enough time and no knowledge of anything else to be used to be able to sit there and, you know, ask him questions about his life and, and kind of just, and, you know, I can only hope I brought him some peace. And I remember coming home exhausted, but remembering that's the feeling, that's what I want. And if I have to learn all of the types of ulcers, <laughs> you can, get to get there then that's just what I have to do so okay. it's it, you know easier said than done but, mm -hmm. but that's what I do okay um what are some things that you love and hate about med school so I love the camaraderie because mm -hmm. it gets kind of like the military there's nothing like that common adverse ad adversary adversity sorry there's nothing like that common adversity well together so when everyone's stressed out and no one knows what's going on, especially first year, you really find people you connect with. And I, I, I found my study buddy early on, luckily, and we always do our reviews together. We keep each other, we hold each other accountable on our study schedules and things like that. And I have laughed until I cried with that girl while we were studying. Um, so now I have a lifelong friend. So the camaraderie is just absolutely wonderful. Okay. Um I have this other question as well. If you were to go back in time and tell you some, tell yourself a few things about the med school process, being a pre-med or just being in med school in general, like what would you tell yourself? Tell myself when I was in undergrad? Yeah, undergrad or just something that you wish you knew before going into med school. Hmm. I think I would want to tell myself that life is happening right now. Life doesn't start when you get the interview or when you get into med school or when you, you know, start second year, life is happening right now. So make sure you 
in with yourself and make sure you're a relatively happy person right now. And if you're not, what do you need to change or what can you change to enjoy your life in the moment? Because I think especially a lot of pre-meds, we get that tunnel vision and we're like, we're going to get into med school. Wonderful, wonderful goal. And so hard on ourselves because it is competitive. Um, and I just feel like a lot of my time was wasted just so set on that. Now, of course, you need that drive, but you also need to take a breath and go to dinner with that friend or, you know, take a walk. And because in the grand scheme of things, it's the connections with people and your own health that's really the most important thing. And, and I think we forget that you're doing just fine. <laughs> you're doing just fine. You're going to make it. You're doing all the right things. If you take a night off, it's not the end of the world. Um, so, yeah, I tell myself to live in the moment and just appreciate okay. it. All right. That's good to know. Um, I guess to end things off a little bit, though, um, what keeps you motivated when things get tough? I have to assume that med school can get pretty hard sometimes. So what are some things that you know, keep you going uh, when times get tough? Oh, yeah. Uh, my friends in med school. Uh, you'll learn really quickly that when you get into med school, people have very different definitions of what busy is, especially your friends that aren't, didn't take the med school route, that are in grad school or even working, you know, your life change very drastically, very quickly. And um, so I really found that just communicating with my friends in med school that I am stressed or this is a lot or how are you feeling? And you'll find way more times than not that they're going through the exact same thing. And that's really comforting to know, like, you're not alone. You're, you're not stupid. You're not the only one has no idea what's happening. Um, and it took me a long time. That was another one of my faults first year was I just kept to myself and I didn't tell anybody that I was struggling. Um, and so, but now I do that. Like I said, I found my study buddy. We always check in every day, you know, how are we doing? How's today feeling? Um, I also, I, I'm very close with my parents. I talk to them almost every day. And so they're a big motivator for me as well. And my mom's pretty good about you know, like I said before, rem helping me remember why I started all of this. So I'd say, yep, that human connection, because that's the core of why we want to be doctors, right? Is that human connection of helping others. And, and when you're a young med student, you don't get that very much, not with patients. So you have that human connection with other people that understand what you're going through. 